Maka laka ding dong, baby. It is a mock draft, our final mock draft of the season. We're drafting from the beginning, the middle, and the end of this Maka draft. Maka laka ding dong. Oh, yeah, baby. So that you can be prepared for your drafts. They're coming up. They're probably happening this weekend. So enjoy the show. Leave a comment. Let us know how your draft goes. Get the ultimate draft kit. Let's have an awesome season together. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, drafts are coming. This weekend, it is a huge draft weekend. If you are still not prepared, come on, get it together. The Ultimate Draft Kit Time is, to step up. It is available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Tier-based rankings, all of our projections, 100-plus video player profiles, our sleepers, the breakouts, the busts, and we will continue to update this as long as we can. Ultimatedraftkit.com. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> Woo. What's up? I got, got Auga. You know, I, I, I bit off more than I could chew. Like a coyote. Yeah. No, I was very strategic. Just howling. Soups on purpose. Howling at the uh, the moon the and moon, the moon. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're out here in the southwest. Lots of coyotes roaming about. In fact, uh, Al Borland, I saw pictures from his neighborhood. Yeah. He lived... He lives a little bit north of us in, in uh, a lot of it, like free, free, wide open desert country. And why did you take a picture of walking down the street the other day? Was it a jaguar? I think it was a mountain lion. I don't know. It was either a it mountain lion spots. or a bobcat. Yeah, it was like a leopard. I thought it was like a lynx. It's a mountain leopard. Which I didn't. Do those exist in lynx, Arizona? Lynx exist. Yeah. It's probably a bobcat, to be honest. That didn't look like but a it, regular. It was bobcat. really big. Yeah. yeah, it looked like something I'd find in a jungle. <laughs> It was scary. We we often make fun of the wilderness that Al Borland lives within because when I have when I drive out to where he lives, mm -hmm. I have to pass a sign that says watch out for the donkeys. Yes. <laughs> watch wild, out for wild donkeys. The, uh, America. There are wild donkeys yeah. roaming free, roaming the streets. We need signs to avoid them. <laughs> where Owl lives. Yeah. What is that all about? Have a Lena. It's ridiculous. And it's, and they're they're actually like there, like it's a real problem. Yeah, I mean they're they're all over the. Not place. just the sign. Yeah, it's not just yeah. Like, uh, get out of my lawn. It's a very necessary sign. You must watch out for all the mules up there. <laughs> uh, welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. News to talk about. Had some preseason games. Damian Fierce going wild. Oh, is that what we're going with? Climbing up the uh, ADP yeah. list. How long yeah. have you been holding on to that? Uh, well, I'll, I'm going to be honest. This was inspired by Twitter. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fine. I okay. saw I saw Damian Fierce on Twitter. And shout I'm, out to Twitter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we want to give we want to give credit where credit is due. So thank you, Twitter. Twitter. Yes, no, I saw from multiple sources. Um, but you know, this is hype season, and yeah. I don't know what size Hall of Fame jersey or I mean jacket he sure. will receive. But he's getting. I mean. The Hall of Fame crew from the preseason, Damian Pierce, mm -hmm. Isaiah Pacheco, yep. Romeo Dubs, 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 and Dubs. I'm going to throw Isaiah Likely in there now because I'm seeing a sure. lot of, you know, that's fair. Isaiah Likely, some Trey Lance maybe mixed in. I think Damian Pierce has, like, he, he took over though. Like that, that last game there, I think he pushed forward. He is officially the preseason hero where he was, he was the value pick yesterday. Hey, I'm cl I'm, I'm sure. claiming success here. I mean, I said oh, he's yeah. going to be a star before you he did. entered the Hall of Fame last night. You did. Uh, I'm not sure how long, much longer he holds up as a value pick. Uh, I know. It's depressing. Over the weekend, he's going to climb ADP. And, I mean, I saw somebody whose draft got delayed two days, uh -huh. and they're furious because they were super in on Damian oh, Pierce. Yep. Their draft was supposed to be last night or the night before. It got kicked back for schedules 
and now he knows there's no yeah. chance of getting him well, at a value. You, are you saying he doesn't have a first rounder? Like, <laughs> I mean, you can you know, just grab the guy. It's true. I uh, I think that what we saw from from last night's game is that there was a lot of rumor like he could possibly win the starting job early in the season. I think it's confirmed oh, now. It's done. Like he is yeah. the starter. You had Marlon Mack basically starting his second half. Yeah, I was going to say the the second half is is where he got in. So, uh Rex Burkhead appears to be the backup to Damian Pierce. It's still not the best situation in the world, but he looks great and he is the starter and no matter what, even if he goes up in ADP, he is still a value for if he goes up another round or two, he's sure. he's still a late round pick. My favorite part Beyond him looking great again, which he, he's just, uh, we talked about it yesterday. He runs so hard. He runs furious. Yeah, furiously. But my favorite part was the interview with Lovey Smith. I don't know if you saw I it. I did not catch this. But what they were we? talking after the touchdown drive, which was their opening drive, and Damian Pierce, it was the drive of Damian Pierce. He, he just said, we're a running team. We go old school. Yeah. Like he, all these things that you want to hear when you're, Committed. Look, they were committed to the run last year, averaging something like three a carry. Mark Ingram, if you remember, was oh, just yes, getting useless carry after useless carry because of their commitment. So there's a lot to be excited about. We have our final mock draft episode today on the show. They were more committed to running than winning. Yes. <laughs> Yes, which, I mean, several coaches are. In fact, yeah. most that are so committed to running. Like, just hold on. Hold on. Any week now. It's going to work. But, I mean, the, their offense is going to be predicated on that, and we'll see how it looks in the regular season. And I want to say, like, good. It, not not the established the run part, because I believe in you need to pass to win, but good for the Houston Texans. A fourth-round pick, I mean, usually speaking, they just they toss them at the back of the depth chart, and they say, rookie, you earn your way up. Maybe you'll get on the field halfway through the year, but they – they did the right thing and said that this guy, this young player, gives us a better chance of establishing the run than Rex Burkett or Marlon Mack. So good for them. I think that's a really good point. We've seen the stubbornness of the yes. veteran first mentality. Yes. And uh, they went with uh, more success <laughs> versus Yeah, uh, so I like that. Uh, I, would, I would add one more thing because we've brought up a lot, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, the history and the data that we have that running backs basically round four and after – they don't hit very often. I mean, right. there are there it's are like certainly Jordan Howard. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, there are there are a, a handful good example. of of hits, but I mean, it overwhelmingly does not work out, especially in the long term. If they come and have a good rookie season, they could still be replaced later. But one thing, you know, as as the NFL changes and adapts, um, you know, I've brought up the fact that like Brees Hall has great draft capital, even though he was a second round pick, because. The, the NFL is not grabbing running backs in the top 10 anymore. That's just that, – that's the old – olden days. And so all these running backs are getting pushed down. So I do wonder if going forward, yep. you know, running backs that fall just to the, the beginning of the fourth round, like is that really still that the like historical – Exactly. Yep. That's a, It's a good follow-up point to what you were saying the other day because I think you are right. I mean, when you were talking about Brees Hall being this elite talent, in my head – I'm still thinking about, you know, you're comparing him at one point to Saquon Barkley. I'm going, like, Saquon Barkley is a top five pick. Christian McCaffrey was a top ten pick. That's where those guys were going, and that was the mark. Zeke, top ten mm -hmm. pick. Where you, yep. It was the mark of Fournette, being an actual those. elite running back, and you only have to look to second-round pick Jonathan Taylor to know that, you know, it's not going to be that way anymore. Najee Harris is another example. Cream of the crop at running back, meh, very late first-round pick, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, something to pay attention to as things change in the NFL. Like I said, final mock draft episode today. Very excited to get into it. Um, we are in very different places in this draft, so the strategies shall be flowing. Yeah, this is really great news. Anybody listening, we have you covered. I'm at the two spot. Mike is in the middle of the draft, and Andy's at the end. So wherever you're drafting from, if you've got a draft this weekend, you can pay attention to where you're closest to here and see some of the strategy. That's right. Uh, two more reminders before we kick things off. The Megalobowl is open, megalobowl.com. Oh, yes. So we have, I think the number is we're up over 8,000 entries so okay. far. Okay. So we are on our way, but you get in there, you get one entry at megalobowl.com by supporting the show. 
and then you pick a draft spot. The draft days are September 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. That's correct, right up until the day before the uh, NFL kickoff. So that will be a lot of fun. And this year, the playoff weeks for the Megalobowl all line up with a traditional league. We've got some fun scoring settings. Please check that out at megalobowl.com. And the Ultimate Draft Kit, uh, available right now. You are drafting. There's an app. You can access it online. You can print a cheat sheet. So however you like to approach the draft, you can you know pull the piece of paper out of your holster oh. or the app or the iPad, whatever you need. Lovey Smith is definitely printing out the cheat See, I'm sheets. See, I'm with Lovey on that. I just, yeah. Although his his papers, you know, there's probably a lot. The font size is pretty big. I do always have He's a an elder states. I have a sharpie headache at the end of every draft, though, because I for for whatever reason I go sharpie. Headache, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's some, what happens to your some picks. really gnarly picks. Uh, do I'll you take toad? <laughs> <laughs> Quick question: uh, There is a strength of schedule in the UDK for for defenses and how they start the year. Who's your favorite team defense to target in? Uh, the 2022 drafts. I just went and marked a few in in yeah. my UDK. Jason, who's your favorite? Uh, I'm I'm gonna throw two out there because what? You no, you only get one. I only get one. Yeah, if yeah. I it didn't say favorites. Okay, if I only get one, then I'm going to go with uh the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, oh, that's, that's that's my favorite one. too. Okay, well yeah. then you guys take that. I'll pick a different one. Okay, I'm gonna go with the Indianapolis Colts. Great be pick, Mike. because they start the season against Houston. And Jacksonville, the when you're when you're taking the defense, sure you're hoping you hit. You're hoping you get that. What was that? Uh, the the Jacksonville the, Jaguars. The, what I'm, there was like the 2000, uh, the 2020 Pats team, or oh, no, where was, they can carry. Yeah, where somehow your defense is just elite and winning you weeks. But that is, it's so rare for that for that to happen in any particular year. So you're just looking at the beginning of the year. Of, of the the opening season and getting some good matchups. Give me the 49ers. That sure. would be my sec. I'm out. Sorry, of no, oh, no, no. 49ers, Chicago and Seattle. Yep. Probably the two worst offenses in football. Poten or potentially the sure. two worst. All right, Jason's going to take the Cleveland Browns then. Yeah, that would be probably the next pick <laughs> because the Cleveland Browns open up with Carolina, the New York Jets, the Steelers, and the Falcons. So they're the only team that I think can get you through an entire month without questioning should I stream. That being said, I don't think that they have quite the high end upside for those first two weeks that the 49ers and Colts have. Those those are my two main picks. News and notes from around the league. Well, Rashad Penny can't catch a break, but he can catch no. COVID because yeah. he tested positive and is out with COVID right now. Should be back in time. Yeah, he'll. It's, it's a, so the NFL policy now is just a five day or when it comes to COVID, right? Yes, there there really isn't an NFL policy. They just say that they are following the uh, what's what, the national the CDC, yeah, one, the CDC, whatever it is, the CDC guidelines. They don't have an official um, COVID protocol anymore. So he'll be back by the beginning of the season, and hopefully now cannot catch COVID for a couple months at least. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was brought up even with like Kyler's, uh, situation. Like there is something to be said about knowing. Sure. Theoretically, yeah. you, you might have one, two, three months, uh, where you're not worrying about that news. Cause you're going to get it. That's going to happen again this year. I mean, yes. the, the protocol stuff, the, the length of duration of it impact is going to be lower, but the surprise Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. oh no, they're gone. That's going to happen. Yes, it will. Antonio Gibson. Uh, head coach Ron Rivera says he expects him to be the team's primary kick returner this season. <sighs> that is um, not good, in That's my opinion. Great news for kick returner leagues. <laughs> like if you <laughs> if you uh, so you yardage get a lot for of returns points for return leagues, then uh, maybe he gets. A yeah, uh, I mean, this is. I agree with Andy. This is this is not great news for the overall fantasy outlook of Antonio Gibson because he'll return the kick, and then it will be Brian Robinson brought in. Brought in first. Can the, you think of any running back? Don't give me wide receivers okay. with punt returns because that happens all the time. But can you think of any running back where they had this role and then had a significant offensive role? I mean, Amir Abdullah was moved into this role once they were done with him at running back. That was the only example that comes to mind. Cordero. Yeah, well, yeah, a little bit Cordero. And then, I mean, David Johnson's rookie year 
uh, I think I think he stayed on kick return after everyone got hurt. Uh, the running backs in front of him that made him the starter, but he became the starter because everybody else got hurt. So normally, you go the, you do that. You do the inverse. Yes, where like when you're new to the league, you start by returning a kick, and then they make you a running back. It's it's interesting though, uh, like. I don't like think he should be left for dead. No, no, for no, the he, record, I'm I'm not leaving it for dead. But just the, what is the thought process here of of Coach Rivera for Antonio Gibson? We're we're looking at this like, is it because of the fumbling that Antonio Gibson has been demoted and Brian Robinson moved up? So you move him to kick return? <laughs> that's that's what like a, a where you have high probability of a fumble it, and in a really bad spot on the field. It's it's strange. I think it is a reliability issue as well. Could be to to you know recurring injury situation. Bang so you up put him in. Kick I know. Return? I, well, like, yeah. I mean, you're right. That part is silly. Uh, it's you only got one play not to no, fumble. Like, Antonio Gibson will be a good kick returner because when he is in space, that's when he is truly great. You mean during the two chances he gets to return the yeah, kick? Yeah. No, I, I I understand that that the kickoff is kind of gone for the NFL but I I think he will succeed in this role but it's unfortunate and fantasy football for the Washington backfield is going to be very difficult to project on a week-to-week -week basis Russell Gage Drake London not practicing MVS was unavailable for the preseason game last night due to a concussion protocol so those are the only other updates that I have for you Unless you want to wax poetic on Damian Pierce anymore. <laughs> Are we pretty comfortable there? I think we're good. Well, let's see where we draft him. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. First round. Here we go. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. <laughs> All right. We are starting our final mock draft. Of this beautiful off season, Jason drafting from the two spot, Mike from the seven. I'm taking the final pick, the twelfth pick of the draft. Twelve team half PP R draft. <laughs> one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, four bench, no deucers. No, nope, no deucers time. today. We, in fact, we only have one third of the deucer crew here today. So too many levers, pulleys, things of that nature to, uh, to, to take control of. Yes. Uh, his draft will be just disgusting. Like All last time. Packers. <laughs> um, but did let's... you just say like last time? Yeah, you're darn right I did. Oh, my gosh. Take a look at the poll. Oh, I know people oh, like that's you just, guys. Yeah, that's, <laughs> just, <laughs> that's fine. Who do you like? That's what that poll was. Um, Everyone roots for the, the underdog and the loser, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Taylor goes 101, Jason at the 102. Uh, it's easy for me. It's Christian McCaffrey at the 101. What? So I will just move on. All right. Uh, Holy so testosterone. <laughs> first round. I'm first glad round, this, all running backs. I'm glad this happened this way because I think home leagues are more often going to look like what just happened in this mock draft than your usual ADP because when push comes to shove and every we time I share get it. Into a home league, it's running back, <laughs> we'll running back, there. running back, running back, running back, running back. You know, everybody just is so afraid of not having them. Derrick Henry, three. Eckler, four. Harris, five. Dalvin Cook, six. Mike, do you keep the running back run happening here? I do not. Uh, this, this certainly pushes me in the direction of the wide receiver because it's the the top running backs here, Mixon. I, you, what about Alvin Kamara? Uh, me... I would consider it. Let me uh, just a hypothetical for you, Andy. If you were sitting in this seventh spot, the draft had gone like this, would you consider Joe Mixon here? Because you, your your projections have him very high. Uh, is he still in your top five? Uh, I don't recall. Yeah, I don't know if he's still in my top five. I can I can check on that. But I'm saying, like, would you consider him there? Probably not. No, You'd still probably go? not with one of the elite wide receivers. Okay, that I can lock that up, and then I know I'm coming. You know, you're at 107. You're coming back in the second round. There's going to be a running back that you feel comfortable with there, um, as opposed to you know going wide receiver really early in the first. So I took Justin Jefferson, who is my number one guy. Yeah, number one wide receiver. You know, I I stared that decision down in one of our leagues recently. I ended up with Derrick Henry, <laughs> but I stared down the Jefferson Cup, and it was really really hard. Yeah. To make that decision to chase last year 
or to to try to project a season for Jefferson that will surpass what Cup can do in his kind of follow-up. Yeah, I have been fully on the Cup side this entire offseason. I find myself now leaning towards Jefferson just because of Matthew Stafford's elbow. That situation is real. He just had months to sit and rest and recover. It's not like he's going to get any more time to recover. So if, right. it, you know, if he misses games, that's uh, terrible. All right, so Mike went with Jefferson Cup was the next pick off the board. Joe Mixon did go at 109. Now, if he had been there at 112, he would have been my pick. Sure. Uh, Devontae Adams at 110. DeAndre Swift at 111. Okay. Uh, and so I will be going with a combination here of wide receiver running back. Uh, I'm going to go Jamar Chase, and I'm going to go with Alvin Kamara. Who, uh, <laughs> That's a nice start. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. I haven't drafted at 112, I think, in any mock draft. Wasn't sure where I, you know, if I'd be staring down that Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs situation that we've talked about. You, you could have. I could have. But Alvin Kamara, still undervalued, still wearing the cloud of the legal situation, which will not, in my opinion, impact him this year, which makes him a bargain. I mean, drafting him after DeAndre Swift. Nick Chubb goes next. I don't love being in the position to decide on whether I want Nick Chubb on my team, just yeah, for the record. I, I find that I am fine with Nick Chubb when he falls to the 2-3 turn, but if, if right. he goes this early, that's that's too high for someone that's not catching passes. Travis Kelsey, first tight end off the board at 203. Stephon Diggs at 204. And Tyreek Hill at 205. Little sad about that. Would have loved to talk about him as uh, a potential Second wide receiver for you, Mike. But are you looking at the running back position I am. here with yeah, the longer wait? The just like Saquon Barkley. If I'm getting more, more and more confident with him, uh, the way that the preseason has gone for him, not not necessarily confidence in the Giants overall, but confident that Barkley is back to health and will have just a, an insane amount of volume. Will Daniel Jones actually throw him the ball? That's a big question. Talk to me about how you think about Saquon versus how you think about Zeke. We had the kind of negative sure. offensive line news with Tyrone Smith yesterday. Zeke has been a favorite of this show due to value. Um, he's not going to probably make it back around you in the third round. I, I think there is a chance that he could, but I'm not going to take him over uh, these other two running backs. The one I'm focused here on is Aaron Jones. And Javante Williams. Yeah. Now, Aaron Jones is higher in my projections. I think we have a much higher probability that Jones finishes the year ranked higher than Javante Williams. But with A.J. Dillon there, the chance of Aaron Jones being a top three running back, I think, are lower than Javante Williams. Hopefully, that that working that through makes sense. Uh, so, it's like, if you want the ceiling, do I go with Javante? If I want steady running back one that I... I'm for sure can count on. I go with Jones, and does having th Jefferson that's the way I'm going to go. Okay, you are going to go with the yeah. steady. You've got Jefferson, who's a ceiling wide receiver uh, that will be steady as well. Josh Allen goes next, first quarterback off the board. Then Mark Andrews okay. and Debo Samuel, Leonard Fournette off the board, and then Jason, you are back on the clock. Christian McCaffrey, your first pick. Javante Williams is still there. Zeke is still there. Um, Saquon. Yeah, so what's the thought process? Um, I I just did an underdog draft where I started Christian McCaffrey at the two, and then I took Javante here. Um, that was who I was wanting. That was who I was hoping got to me. He did get to me when Mike was talking about. Him. I was like, oh, no, uh, you know, I knew Aaron Jones wouldn't get to me just based on the ADP. That being said, it is tough because while I have Christian McCaffrey, there is Ceedee Lamb sitting there who has dropped further than normal. He's at the back of the second round right now, so. Look, I'm near the turn, and I'm going to play the play it out game where you say, okay, if I take C.D. Lamb, and then I want a running back and a wide receiver at these two picks, I pick in three more picks. The running backs available are Saquon. I'm happy with Javante. I'm happy with, uh, and then and then Zeke I and guess Connor. yeah, Zeke and Connor at this spot. I'm not quite as happy with. Whereas at wide receiver, if I lose C.D. Lamb, I'd be happy with A.J. Brown. And I'd be happy with Mike Evans. So I am going to take... I don't know where you're going. I was going to say, I'm not sure what that led into. Which one are you going with? I'm taking Javante. I okay. love the <laughs> the upside of a Christian McCaffrey 
uh, Javante Williams uh, tandem at running back. And the nicest part is that my guy, C.D. Lamb, came back to me. He did. You gambled and won. Congratulations. Saquon and Keenan in between your pick of Javante and C.D. Lamb. Teammate Zeke Elliott. One pick after C.D. Lamb, then Kyle Pitts. I would have had an interesting discussion about Kyle Pitts if you made it back to me at 312. Sure. Uh, I am. I would have had to consider him at, yeah. one, at the 3-7. A.J. Brown and Mike Evans go next. Mike, you have often taken Mike Evans. Not available to you. He's not. Uh, you do have uh, a favorite of yours, James Conner, sitting there at the running back position at wide receiver. A uh, My guy in Michael Pittman. And at tight end, probably not looking at George Kittle here. No, I am not. We built this city. It's as All easy right. as that. It, it, no suspense. Uh, like honest, James Conner is interesting there because I think that he can finish as a top 10 guy, but it's fantasy football. I love Michael Pittman. I want him on my teams. I believe in the player. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, and it's, it's fun. It's fun to have the players you believe in on your team. All right. Well, I am less happy with my options here than I was at the one, two turn. <laughs> That's usually the case. Yeah. So Michael Pittman to Mike and then Justin Herbert, who I would have selected with one of my two Ooh, picks had he made it through. Wow. Um, I would have gone for that kind of position dominance at this point. Um, drafting that late in the first round, Justin Herbert did go James Connor, then T Higgins and George Kittle. So I'm not going to have, I'm not going the Darren Waller route here. Uh, in the end of the third and the top of the fourth round at wide receiver. Uh, this is really where it gets tough when you're on the turn. You have such a long wait that the average draft position of certain players, it kind of gets thrown out the window. And I, the example I'll give you is it's like, if I don't take somebody like Allen Robinson here, which seems a little early on my guy, eh, he might not come back around to me. Probably doesn't. Probably doesn't. Um, other wide receiver options on the board, Mike Williams, another player that I really like. Does he get back to me? Uh, at and Jason's shaking his no, head. No. None of, <laughs> there's there's you know twenty three more players picked. There's no one that's getting back to you that you're looking at right now that you would reach a little bit. You always have to take your guys at the turn. Yeah, and it's tough because I don't like where I have to take them. Other running backs on the board. David Montgomery, who I do have uh, much more confidence in than these two gentlemen, uh, especially when I have a, a, an Alvin Kamara. Like Montgomery as a steady and then giving you those burst games that he's given over the last couple of years. I like that. So I think I'm going to go with the running back wide receiver combo again. I'm going to go okay. with Montgomery, who I have ranked higher than the rest of this crew. And then I'm going to come back with the explosiveness of Mike Williams, which Jamar Chase and Mike Williams is going to be there may be some pain, painful weeks if those, sure. if neither guy hits, but the odds of neither guy hitting, um, I don't see that being a lot of weeks this year. I was very curious. I I know you love Mike Williams. You love Allen Robinson. That's they're, right. They're both your my guys, and I was curious which one you would pick when you're looking at your wide receiver two. Yeah. Asked and answered. <laughs> yeah. So I, I went Mike Williams based on this team makeup. Uh, after Mike Williams was Cam Akers, Patrick Mahomes – who I did kind of like sideways look at for a split second okay. after my Herbert comments. But then Brees Hall off the board, Darren Waller. Mike, I'm going to give you a second to think about it. We'll be right oh, back. Oh, thank goodness. Mike, I've given you a second to think about it. Justin I didn't Jefferson. I was being jocular. Oh, you didn't. Um, yeah. Aaron Jones, Michael Pittman, Justin Jefferson, your roster so far. Uh, so we are firmly in the running back dead zone. ETN, what is the status of James Robinson? It, all the beat reporters saying he's going to be the guy if he's good to go. Saying he's going to be good to go. So that be, that's a feels like a more risky pick here in the fourth. Jacobs, uh, Andy's bust pick from yesterday's show, which I agree with. I don't like Jacobs here. Gibson, scary. Dobbins, Dobbins in the knee recovery. Like everyone is scary here at the running back position, except for AJ Dillon. But I have Aaron Jones. Do I really want to spend that would be wild. two of my first four picks on 
the Green Bay running backs. And no, I I don't. Had I gone, um, who was the other? I can't remember the other running back. You were guy. looking Barkley, at Aaron Javante. Jones, Javante. Yeah, had Javante. I gone, had I gone Javante, this would be uh, smashing it, AJ Dillon. It would. Do you be, have regrets? No, I don't have regrets. But it's funny of the. It would be an inverse situation because the player I'm going to take is Cortland Sutton. Had I taken Javante in the second, do I really want to take another Bronco if, here in the fourth? If you really want it to be a perfect inverse, though, I need you to select Melvin Gordon here in the fourth. <laughs> yeah. That would be the proper inverse, Mike. Mayhem. If you, want to, if you oh. want to be a man of your word. Sorry, uh, boring pick, everybody. It's Cortland Sutton. See, I knew, big shocker. I knew it was going to be Cortland Sutton. Um, you can't pass on. You're, when, no. when all three of your my guys are wide receivers, you can't you can't pass on him. No. Nope. Uh DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, Jalen Waddell, Antonio Gibson. Jason, you are on the clock at the four eleven. Uh this draft is working out perfectly for how I like to draft the specific players. You know, I love Javante this year. I want the high upside guys, and there was one in the fourth round that I really, really liked. And I was surprised to hear you know, you say you would have taken AJ Dillon over him. To me, Travis Etienne, I know that there's questions about James Robinson. With or without James Robinson, I think Etienne's going to be great. He's an explosive athlete that was a first-round running back. He's healthy. He's been the talk of camp. I think he has a great season. So that's a no-brainer for okay. me. Okay, that's um, fair enough. Fair enough. And now that I've got Javante Williams, Travis Etienne, and Christian McCaffrey, I'm looking at the wide receiver position. I still think it's a little early for the quarterbacks here. Uh, I doubt that my guy Jalen Hurts gets back to me, but maybe Russell Wilson next round. So I'm going to take instead of my guy, Andy's guy, Allen Robinson. Mm. And the dream dies. <laughs> yes. I thought yes. it was I, a, part of the thought process with Mike Williams there was that there was a 10% chance that Allen Robinson could have made it back. If people, I if, told you, if I wasn't going to well, let that I, happen. Yeah, I know. I know. But if, if you know if some more quarterbacks and other tight end had gone, maybe. But uh, it didn't happen, and uh, Allen Robinson's on your roster, and I'm sad. Jerry Judy, Josh Jacobs, Elijah Mitchell, J.K. Dobbins. Oh, man. Uh, Mike, would you have been interested in Mitchell or Dobbins at that no, spot? No, but now I am in quite the pickle. Uh, the two players that I am considering, A.J. Dillon, Green Bay running back. Could I, I be? I love this. Could I be chilling? I don't love it. I love the situation you are stuck in. And the other player I would be taking is Clyde Edwards-Alaire from the Kansas City Chiefs of everything that is going on with all the Pacheco it, training camp superstar. Uh, Ronald Jones is there. Like The thing that has been constant is Clyde Edwards-Alaire is the starter. It will be a committee. You won't get bell cow usage from Clyde. But he's the starter. He's going to be heavily utilized, and I have them back to back in my projections. So let me let me ask you a question. Please, here. when do. I when I think stall for time. No, no, I I am I. So when <laughs> I dying. think about this, you know, Aaron Jones for all his greatness, he has games where he is kind of he disappears. That has been the history, right? And Clyde is the same story. Clyde would never disappear. Clyde would never appear. Um, <laughs> but. So you look at that and you say, well, you could have some weeks where both guys are kind of absent from your running back room, and that would be really difficult. On the other hand, you're not going to have a week that A.J. Dillon and, exactly. and Aaron Jones are invisible together. So does that kind of – do you either of you think of that that I, way? I think that you could also argue you're not going to have a week where Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon both blow up together. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you, it, Maybe once or twice throughout the season. But. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you when you have a great week, it's because you had, you know, multi-touchdowns. Yes. They're not both having multi-touchdowns in the same game very often. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough decision. And here's the deal. You're, you're drafting your second running back in the fifth round. So this is a starter. This is someone you're going to uh, – Go into the season saying, I have to start them. So you would be starting A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones together. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Clyde. And, of course, I was hoping A.J. Dillon would somehow fall to oh. me. At that was the also part of the uh, upside of the Clyde pick is I knew Andy's hopes would rise slightly. <laughs> and I knew there was a 0% chance A.J. Dillon would make it. I am sad. I don't like drafting here. Uh, Clyde Clyde at the uh, 507 for a starter that's good value on a good offense. Chris Godwin, A.J. Dillon off the board. Hollywood Brown off the board. Joe Burrow, 
off the board. And here I am with two picks at the 5-6 turn. I'm not going to take him here, but I do want to bring the name up. I think he's been ignored because we don't want to pay attention to him. But the way the offseason is gone, Damian Harris is just – It's really He's hard. just in the same role he was last year where he was super successful. They've already said he's going to be in on more passing downs. James White is is not a factor. He retired. So even if people love Ramondre late, Damian Harris is going to be there, and we're all going to say, whoops, <laughs> yeah. because he's just – the starter on a team that has been successful running the football. The Patriots have a lot of beat reporters that actually like stat out their entire training camp. And one of the most shocking things from training camp is the amount of receptions that Damian Harris has had. Wait, I have missed that. Yeah. Damian Harris has been up there in, in target counts. So it's like, which I think he can catch. Like there was one play in particular last year where it was just, it was a terrible pass by Mac Jones where Damian Harris had to spin like basically a full 180 to and reach his hands out to snatch the ball behind him. Like it was it was not a play where really anything happened. He caught the ball and then was tackled immediately. But it was like yeah, he's not a bad pass like pitcher. guys who can't catch don't make that reception. He, he can do. Ronald it. Jones ain't never catching that ball. Oh oh goodness gracious! Ronald no. Jones would punt that ball up into the air he for an just, interception. He would just punch. Yeah, yeah. he would just. Yeah, I don't want this. Moving on. Next play. All right, did we give you enough time there, Andy? No, yeah, I think I know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Never enough time at the 5-6 turn here. No, I think I know what I'm going to do here. The running back situation, there's a bunch of guys lumped into kind of a tier that I'm not in love with, and I think some of that group will actually get back to me with my next pick. So I'm going to be taking a little bit of a different route here. I'm going to go Brandon Cooks. Uh, I like to go it. with Jamar Chase and Mike Williams at the wide receiver position. And then I'm actually going to go with uh, a My Guy finalist that didn't quite make the list, but is a former MVP who has won people championships. I'm going to go with Lamar. I also like that. And knew, Jackson. I wrote it down because when I saw he was available here and I knew he was in your, uh, the, you know, the My Guy finalist, this is a perfect spot for him. So uh, I'm going to do that. And another reason I went with Lamar is. There's kind of four quarterbacks in a tier here. Lamar, Kyler, Hurts, and Russell Wilson that I would be really excited about. And I have to wait 22 picks before I get to pick again. I just wasn't willing to lose my favorite of that bunch. Amari Cooper, Miles Sanders, Gabe Davis, Kareem Hunt, off the board. Mike, you are sitting here, and amazingly for you, no AJ Dillon available. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, this is this is a harder pick for me because I'm, I'm, I'm I have the two running backs, you know, so I'm wide receiver uh, heavier, so I get three versus the two. But the running backs in this ADP zone, because I'm in the middle, I can play the ADP game. It's you know, Damian Harris. You do I really want to take him here? Tony Pollard, more and more pass catching role news. Uh, coming out for Tony Pollard. Kenneth Walker to sit on my bench until he's healthier or the starter, Rashad Penny. So those are the kind of running backs that I'm looking at. But then there's still upside wide receivers here of of Mooney, who I love, from the Bears. Rashad Bateman, could he break out? But it's my wide receiver four, and I'm, I'm going to take a chance on what I believe can happen in Minnesota in that Adam Thielen turns into a a big slot role player, and it, it, like if I'm wrong here, it's all right. I got the three wide receivers, but if he's if he's great, then then this is a a very strong situation. Something very exciting happened. Uh, Jason grimaced, and now Jason oh, doesn't what... Jason doesn't grimace when Adam Thielen's taken. That's no. not what Jason does. Jason kind of rejoices when yep. uh, Adam Thielen falls past him, and he just doesn't take him. Yeah, Jason after... grimaces when Jalen Hurts and <laughs> Kyler Murray go off the board in between your selection and his now on the clock. Pick. Yeah, I especially grimace when either one of those guys, Kyler and Hurts, I I love them both. You're hurting in right this now. This value and <laughs> thank you, thank you, Al. Um, this was the you know you, we talked uh, the other day about like when it hurts is when 
you got a couple of guys left, mm -hmm. and it's right before you. Is the two picks? You what know, were the two guys? Uh, Jalen Hurts and Kyler oh, Murray. So, but this is validating my Lamar pick because I knew I wasn't going to get one of the guys I liked. Now you're in a situation where do you panic pick Russ? No, I, 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 I do pick Russ, but I don't okay. think it's a panic pick. My goal. I like that from... I just walked him into it somehow being a bad pick. <laughs> no, this was my idea. <laughs> Well, it, no, it, it, it's actually who I thought I was going to get when I took Etienne and Allen Robinson last round. I thought it was too early to get a quarterback. I didn't think Kyler or Hertz would make it back to me, and I thought Russ would. I just get upset because... Are you willing to take the chance of Russ getting to your next pick when Team 1 has no quarterbacks yet? I am not because the other player I would be drafting and will draft, because I'm sure he'll get back to me, we'll see. Is Chase Edmonds. Is not, uh, is not Chase Edmonds, even though I love Chase Edmonds. Uh, I have Christian McCaffrey, Javante Williams, and Travis Etienne. So I, I feel like I'm I'm loaded right now at running back and at wide receiver with Rashad Bateman still able to be the number one for your uh, Yeah, I was MVP, hoping he Lamar would make Jackson it back, pick. but hope is not a thing you're supposed to have <laughs> at the when no. you're at the turn. Abandon all Don't hope. even project your next pick. Just let let the onslaught happen. They'll all, they'll all be drafted by your friends and then just respond later. Juju goes next. DeAndre Hopkins finally off the board. I was going to have a conversation about DeAndre Hopkins with my seventh pick and whether that would be potential upside there watched uh we saw that practice video of hopkins still being just hopkins shoving the person off. i mean just one-handed simple uh, majestic catch it by was super eloquent offensive pass oh yeah there was major opi uh ken walker cordero patterson mike you are back on the board All right. um you have three wide outs sorry four, four. wide outs two running backs Really one and a half because Clyde, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I, so what are you, what are you I looking totally at here? I totally get that. Uh, we are in the Chase Edmonds zone. Yeah. And that's probably where I'm going to go. But just, What about Rashad Penny? But to, to walk it through the guys who I would be considering here, Chase Edmonds, Rash, uh, uh, Rashad Penny, like you said, and I think this is the Damian Fierce zone where – I <laughs> <laughs> oh baby oh that's who this. Andy's just so sure is coming back <laughs> you gotta do it Mike oh, I hate this spot man I oh. thought there's no way this oh, is man. not that I would take him yeah I I want it pointed out of like his when we were pointing him out his ADP we were talking about him in the ninth round and it's players like that where you like them and they get such buzz and you're hopeful of the upside where are you okay taking them this would be it my build i could certainly use another running back and in the seventh that's fine i'm, I'm fine moving a ninth player into the seventh if i really believe in them um my projections do have uh chase edmonds still decently above damian fierce so i oh now that makes sense <laughs> So I will select Damian Pierce. Oh, yes! Wait, what? Yes! Oh, baby! <laughs> Mike, you just played that. Actually, uh, just I'm a masterpiece. I'm actually thrilled now. By the way, that was that was hilarious. I just assumed if you took Damian Pierce, that Chase Edmonds would not somehow get to me at the 12th pick See, of the seventh not round. Is fun? No, it isn't. I, I mean, would have taken Chase Edmonds. That was an absolutely I, delicious drop for boom. Chase Edmonds. I, I mean, the reality is, I think Chase Edmonds' greater sign <laughs> than Damian Pierce. You had to take Damian yes. Pierce there for the good of for the show, for the show, for uh, Duncan on Andy. But Andy oh, gets what his own run. comeuppance by getting Chase Edmonds to yeah. fall all the way. I mean, it's not really falling all the way. He's at the 7-8 turn, and that's about where his ADP is. But great pick, Andy. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, so I will go Chase Edmonds with the first selection. Having a harder time with Dang the second it, one. A lot. <laughs> it was so good. It was. It was really well played, too, because it was like, so I'm clearly going to take Chase Edmonds. Boom, bam, your guy. So I think I, I have a lot of wide receivers that I am okay with later beyond my Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, Brandon Cooks, reliable stack. So I'm going to go running back, running back here. Ooh. There were three names that I wanted to get to me when Mike was on the clock. Damian Pierce. I didn't think Chase Edmonds could, but Chase Edmonds is in that group. And the last one is actually Ramondre Stevenson. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to take okay. Stevenson with the potential breakout, him taking over a James White role, plus 
right? You get a drive of, you know, last year they would go Damian Harris, then they'd come back with Ramondre, and then there'd be Brandon Bolden on third down. If they're going to keep those guys out there for three downs, Ramondre is going to do even more work. I'm going to take the shot at running back, depth, value, upside. I'm going to go Edmonds, Ramondre. Drake London goes next, then Rashad Penny, who I think Jason thought I was going to take. Yep. TJ Hawkinson, and then Elijah Moore, who I think Mike would have taken here, but he's gone. It was going to be a very difficult decision that I was dreading to, to fall into my lap between Elijah Moore, my breakout pick from yesterday, or my other my guy of Alan Lazard. But Elijah Moore is gone, so I will be taking Alan Lazard. The uh, the wide receivers are in that range. You know, it's it's Renfro, Ayuk, Olave, funny enough, who went right after Alan Lazard. The potential for a top 20 season from those guys, it could happen, but I think that the odds are higher for Lazard should the, the touchdown outlier season happen. All right. Uh, Renfro, Ayuk, Olave, Dak Prescott, Jason, two quick picks here in the ninth, eighth and ninth round. Yeah, so I, I there's one player at running back that I kind of like. I I've talked up my b belief in James Cook as a day two pick on a great offense as a pass catcher, but I'm going to do something and grab a guy I haven't yet drafted. Oh, anywhere in you know I I've got I him in a who it few is. underdog leagues, but I believe he is easily the most talented physical player. Oh, <clears throat> I don't know who it is left at the position. I'm going to actually take a shot on Dallas Goddard. Being more involved now that he is has a whole camp as the I, main I just tight took end. him in my underdog draft too, and that was because it was I have not taken Dallas Goddard. And part of fantasy football is you have to have margin that you are incorrect on some of these players. Yeah, and so uh, now I've got my quarterback and my tight end taken care of in round six and eight. I can focus on getting high upside later round running backs and wide receivers the rest of the way. James Cook fits that bill to me as a rookie second round pick on a great offense who's going to catch passes I'll take that shot all right Mike you are back on the clock okay so there are there's still some upside wide receivers I love Christian Kirk the I think the value here is tremendous um but so looking over at the running back position Melvin Gordon is there just it's going to be doing his thing of being, you know, perfectly fine and playable as a running back three flex, running back two in a pinch. Daryl Henderson, which the 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 talks of from the Rams of it being an RBBC are getting louder and more pronounced. So I I think it's interesting that I'm I'm looking between Henderson or or do I leave margin. And say, I uh, maybe I am wrong about Michael Carter of the New York Jets, who are still the reports coming out saying he is still the running back one. How long does he remain the running back one? It, I guess, it could happen for the for the season. I believe that Brees will become that sooner than later. Yeah, that one's tough. That's a tougher situation. People want to compare the Naeem Hines and Jonathan Taylor situation, but I don't really find that to be a Perfect Hines match. is more of a Hines what has actually, his role. Well, what actually happened in the rookie season was the incumbent tore his Achilles. So Marlon Mack was oh, yes. the storyline as the starter of that year, and he tore his Achilles in week one, which made that a little bit easier. Um, Carter's probably an in between of being a Hines slash Mack. He could, I mean, he's not the future starter on that team by any stretch. Mike, you went with Daryl Henderson. Yeah, I'm going the ups between the Love two it. of them. Should should they both hit Henderson's upside with the Rams is much greater. All right. I'm going to make it nice and quick here with two of my last three picks. The first one, I'm going to take Brian Robinson running back for the Washington Commanders. 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 And then instead of waiting for the very, very final pick to go tight end, I'm going to take the one I like, which is Cole Komet, a PPR yeah. upside tight yeah. end for the Chicago Bears. That's I'm, upsetting. And he's not going to get back to me. So, Kadarius Tony, Christian Kirk, Chase Claypool, Kirk, and Tony were in consideration there. Uh, Stafford off the board, Mike. You are back. You have two picks left, and you have to take yep. quarterback tight end. Yeah, Team Nine was a real son of a gun. They took Trey Lance uh, there back in the ninth round. Man, so so talk to me briefly, Mike. Okay. Trey Lance goes two picks after Daryl Henderson. Yes. 
When you think of your team makeup, you have to be less happy with Daryl Henderson than Trey Lance. I uh, have many regrets. Okay. Uh, I didn't think that Team 9 would do that. Um, I guess I didn't scroll up completely, so I, I played myself the fool. Uh, didn't look at the full grid, realizing that Team 9 needed the quarterback. I thought we were all... I, I I thought we were all filled up, so I was safe there. But I did not get him, so that's a huge mistake. And I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. I guess uh, look, I, that backs me into the Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen stack, and Justin Jefferson, which, I mean, yeah. Mistakes yeah. were made there, too. I didn't <laughs> even realize a, that. That. Was, that was a little well, That was me realizing that I, <laughs> well, that's another tip. I have Jefferson and Thielen. Another tip for the, the I am foot plan not, I am out of it today. is when you're doing your drafts, um, we don't recommend at the same time podcasting. Yeah, uh, on you a major lose show. track it's, of some things. It does make it slightly more. Just difficult. imagine if you had taken AJ Dillon and then stared down the Lazard pick. Yeah, that, I mean, this is a situation. You're all right. going all uh, NFC North. Yeah, NFC North. Yep. Okay, so I am final two picks Jason. on the clock. I want to shore up my wide receivers. I know the exact two that I'm going to pick. One of them is uh. You know, a, a rookie who's had all the buzz. And so I'm going to take George Pickens with the first pick. And the reason that okay. I say that uh, I know both picks is because the other guy is undrafted by ADP. I don't think a lot of people are uh, in normal home leagues, you know, scratching and clawing to get him. But I still believe that Julio Jones could have a very good season. So with the last pick of the draft, I will have uh, George Pickens and Julio Jones added to my wide receiver core. All right, after Julio went, Naeem Hines, Mike Kosicki, Valdez Scantling, and Albert Ogwebanon. That puts me up for my tight end position. Clearly, I have to go with Irv Smith to complete my Minnesota Vikings super-duper stack. That's a joke. Uh, yeah, I was like, are you really no, doing that? No, I'm not. It's it's David Njoku. The the sleepers that I would take there, like Cole Komet, those guys are gone. Going to believe in the Brissette over targeting the tight end position and him getting the big bag of money. And it's worth mentioning with Irv Smith because that is a, a player that is a lot of people's like last round target. He has been activated off the pup, but he has not caught passes yet. I would not take him uh, right now in this draft just because you don't know if you even have a player to start week one. Yeah, we've we've never seen that yet from Irv Smith. Njoku, great pick. Isaiah Spiller, Landry Boyd, and Watson, and I have the final pick in the draft. There is a handful of wide receiver sleepers. That's where I need to shore up. Rond Rondale Moore is there. Um, Jalen Tolbert is there. Alec Pierce is there. Uh, Wandale, a sleeper I mentioned on the show. Josh Palmer, a lot of buzz. But the pick is going to be the first-round starter, Jahan Dotson, with my final yeah, pick good. of the draft. Uh, I like to tuck a couple of uh, commanders into the final three picks. But um, What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Well, it's better than the top of the draft, right? My squad, I'm going to run it back to you. Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, Brandon Cooks, John Dotson at wide receiver, uh, Alvin Kamara, David Montgomery, Chase Edmonds, Ramondre Stevenson, Brian Robinson at running back. My quarterback is Lamar Jackson. My tight end, Cole Komet. I'm pretty happy considering I didn't enjoy the process at the 112. I'm yeah. pretty happy with the final yeah, roster. Yeah, your team ended up solid. Uh, I, I love my team uh, quite a bit. My <laughs> running backs are Christian McCaffrey, Javante Williams, Travis Etienne, and James Cook. At wide receiver, I've got CeeDee Lamb, Allen Robinson, Rashad Bateman, George Pickens, and Julio Jones. And Russell Wilson at quarterback with Dallas Goddard at tight end. My running backs, Aaron Jones, Clyde Edwards, Elaire, Damian Pierce, a.k.a. Damian Pierce, and Daryl Henderson. Then my wide receivers are Justin Jefferson, Michael Pittman, Cortland Sutton, Adam Thielen, Alan Lazard, that's where my strength is. Uh, Kirk Cousins completed my Super Viking stack. Double stack. My Super Viking stack, which uh, was a mistake. But honestly, that with everything that's going on there, that that could, that could be okay. Uh, and then David Njoku is my flyer tight end. All right. Al, do you have a favorite of the three rosters? Uh, I, I know I'm not supposed to talk to you, but uh, do you have a favorite? I think I'd go with Jason on this one. Okay. All right. I would like the number two pick, too. <laughs> yeah. I'd, prefer, it's it's I, I'd prefer the number two pick. It's nice. Um, all right. A couple more reminders for you. UltimateDraftKit.com, uh Great chance to get involved before the season starts. 
if you want to help the show in a very simple, quick way, make sure you uh, follow the show on Apple Podcasts. There's a little plus icon in the upper right. You can click. Uh, there's a follow button on our uh, Spotify on the Spotify app, and we're also going. You know, if you follow us on Spotify, you're also going to be uh, notified when oh. we are live in the party room, which is a live stream we do every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. And the other way you can support us, go subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. So you can watch it. Click the bell, and we'll let you know when Mike is live for his Sunday live stream, which is it's kind of essential. Over the years, mm -hmm. we've built up. Um, Mike's been doing it for a while, and, and you can tune in, get last-moment commentary on all of the actives and inactives that happen on Sunday morning, like we, the weather, the injuries, yeah, we all do the our, things that we do our best on the rankings during the week, but lots change. Lots of things change one hour before games begin. Yep. That's your last chance to, to get that, you know, that take that information to watch Mike just spin in circles as he oh. figures this stuff out. And the, uh, I think a great part of it is I too am tilting. Because I have, <laughs> I have my own ridiculous to start sit, the start sit decisions that I have to make along with you. So you are not alone. No, just I don't sit in an ivory tower pretending I have all the answers. I work through everything with y'all. Every single week, Mike is in that chair, deciding which Vi Vikings wide receiver he needs <laughs> yeah. to start yeah. from his group. Both. And if you want to start support yourself, get the ultimate draft kit. Yeah. Your draft is coming up. Stop waiting. UltimateDraftKit.com. We want you to dominate and win championships this year. All right. Back with another show on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.